Dr. Martin. Yes. You'll forgive me for not rising. An accident. Might call it that. Carelessness, actually. Never turn your back on a patient. Teach you that at school, don't they? Yes, they do, Dr. Sir. Hey, Dr. Rutherford. Lionel Rutherford. Ah. Uh, I understood that Dr. Starr was head of this institution. I'm Dr. Starr's associate. Sit down, sit down. You advertised for a senior houseman. I sent along my credentials and Dr. Starr asked me to come along for an interview. I've read your report, but it doesn't tell me what I need to know. Your background qualifies you to set up a fashionable psychiatric practice to hold wealthy old ladies by the hand while they tell you about their horrible house. But we're a long way from Harley Street, out here. This is a, an asylum for the incurably insane. You want to know the most useful thing here? This. Control system for the door upstairs. No keys, just a, an electrical device. The door can't be opened from either side. Unless I press that button. If you're trying to warn me that some of the inmates are potentially dangerous, you needn't worry. I've dealt with disturbed patients during my training. By what methods? Kindness, understanding, insight. Exactly my ways, 20 years ago. Now I'm not so sure. Those poor devils up there can't be cured. They can only be confined and kept from being dangerous. Is that Dr. Starr's outlook, too? Dr. Starr is upstairs now. What, with a patient? Dr. Starr is a patient. Dr. Starr attacked me a few days ago, suddenly, without warning. That's how I injured my leg. Yes. Working with the mentally disturbed can lead to a breakdown. The nurse and orderly managed to transfer Dr. Starr upstairs with the other patients. I can't go there. The orderly gives me reports. He says the doctor is perfectly rational now. Except for one thing. A new personality seems to have taken over. With its own name and its own life story. Hysterical few. Meaningless label. It describes something that exists. From time to time, a man disappears and is discovered much later, living in a different town, under a different name, following a different occupation, because something happened in his earlier life that made it completely intolerable. You believe you could recognize such a case? I'm certain of it. Very well. We'll call it a test. There are several patients upstairs with the sort of condition you describe. 
Go up there. Talk to me. If you can recognize who is or was Dr. Starr, then I'll consider you qualified for the position. I will recognize him. Him? How do you know the doctor's a man? Reynolds. Yes, Doctor. Reynolds. Yes, sir. I'm sending a young man upstairs. Martin. Dr. Martin. Now listen to me carefully. Martin, I'm Max Reynolds, the orderly. I'm pleased to meet you. Come this way. It keeps out the draft, as Dr. Starr used to say. You know why I'm here. Dr. Rutherford gave me full instructions. What can you tell me about the doctor? Who? Rutherford? Starr. Nothing. You have to be given full cooperation, but no clues. Are all these rooms occupied? Yes. We keep them locked, of course, the security measure. I mean, this one is. It's my office. Aren't the patients free to move around at all? They're not too badly off. You see for yourself. First patient. Mm hmm. Name? She calls herself Bonnie. B Star. That's a question for you to decide. <laughs> Oh, Bonnie. Bonnie. Come along. Here's Dr. Martin to see you. Leave me alone. Oh, I was hoping I could talk to you. Talk? <laughs> That's all you people ever do is talk. Nobody listens. I listen too. You wouldn't believe me. Perhaps not, but I am willing to listen. Mm, well, if it makes any difference. The last time, Walter, there's nothing to worry about. 
Did it arrive? Yes, it's here. They finished installing it about an hour ago. There's nothing to worry about. Well, it's easy enough for you to say, Bonnie, but supposing something goes wrong? It can go wrong, not if you follow the plan. I'll follow it. But if only I could see you first. You'll see me soon enough. I'll be waiting for you once it's over. Walter, you're home early. I uh, didn't get into town today. But you did get into the brandy. This happens to be my first drink. Not your last, I'm sure. Can I fix you one? Yes, please. How did your class go? Oh, it's not a class. Professor Kalanga is a spiritual leader. Oh, sir. Back in Africa, it'd be just another witch doctor. What do you know about it? Don't forget, I lived there for years. After all, my father was... Governor General of the colony. <sighs> it's a good thing he can't see his daughter now. The poor old boy turn in his grave. Taking voodoo lessons from a black charlatan. It is not voodoo. There are natural forces which are stronger than... than life or death. Forces which modern civilized man has forgotten. I wish you'd forget all this mumbo-jumbo. What's that? It's called Anuanga. I think it's revolting. It's not supposed to be pretty. The serpent is a symbol of the life force. And the teeth are to protect one from evil. There are no evil in your life. Oh, but there is. What do you mean? Bonnie. That's all over and done with. I swear it. Only last month you came and asked me for a divorce. I haven't seen her since. You have my word on that. I'm glad you haven't. Because I told you then, and I'm telling you now, there won't be any divorce. <coughs> oh, I know you, Walter. You're a weak, vain, selfish opportunist. You're content to live off my money. But you are mine. And I will never let you go. Never. Now, you do understand that, don't you? Perfectly. <laughs> Darling. I've got a present for you. Oh? What is it? You'll see. Come along with me. I don't see anything. Downstairs. In the basement. I'll see you. Careful now, mind the steps. Well, what is it? Darling, it's a freezer. Did you like it? Oh, you know I've always wanted one. What a lovely surprise. I have another one for you. What is it? This.
Rest in pieces. How soon can you get here? I'm just packing. I should be there within the hour. I'll be ready. One more thing, Walter. We'll have to take her along. Why? There's no need for that. No one's going to check up while we're away. It'll be safer if there's nothing left behind. They may still suspect, but they'll have no proof. We'll dispose of the evidence on the way to the airport. And, but we can't talk about it on the phone. We'll talk when you're here. But for God's sake, don't let anyone see you. I'll bring my car round to the back, and I'll keep the kitchen door unlocked so I won't have to knock. All right, but hurry. The sooner we're out of here, the better. I'll be right there. Yeah, I'll be waiting. Walter. Walter. Thank you. 
Walter? Walter. Everything was gone. But the hand was on my face. I chopped and chopped and chopped at it. Now do you believe me? Now? <laughs> Paranoid psychosis. How did you come to the asylum? You could have come as a doctor. And the wife? You learn the real case histories when you've made your choice. That's the service lift from the kitchen. The next patient? 
His name is Bruno. Bruno? This is Dr. Martin. What are you making? Whatever you like. Could it be a surgical gown? I can make whatever you wish. It could be a surgical gown, a shroud, and a tailor. Doctors can sew. Stitch. Always been a tailor. Always. Oh, Mrs. Stevens. Good evening. It's the first of the month. The rent is due. Mr. Stebbins, I got a wonderful idea. Have you got the rent? Every month you come here and always you are wearing the same suit. Nothing wrong with my suit? Gives me good wear? Ah, uh, wear, yes. But style, no. Now listen. For one month's rent, I could make for you such a suit. I don't need a suit. And if I did, I wouldn't get it from you. I haven't got it. Now, see here. No, no, no. You, 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 you see here, Mrs. Stem. You see this shop. People, people, fine people used to come here for fine tailoring. Now, little dressing, little mending, that's all I get. I will pay the rent, but you must give me a little more time. I'll tell you what. Today's Monday, right? I'll be back here on Saturday morning. Saturday morning? Bright and early. And if you haven't got the rent, you can start packing. No tricks now. Your supper, it's ready. I'm not hungry. Something is wrong? Not something, Anna. Everything. Mrs. Stebbins was here. He's given us one week. A man works hard all his life, and then in one week, where can we go? Good evening. Is the proprietor in? I am the proprietor. Go have your supper. Now, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Reb? Smith, am I correct in assuming that you can tailor a garment from any material of my own selection? You want I should make you a suit? <laughs> exactly. I have a fine stock of woolens here. That I... will not be necessary. I brought my own material. I see. You will be wanting something special. Correct. Something very special. There's enough here for a suit, I believe. Unusual. Special. It will be difficult to work from such a fabric, but I can promise you a suit. 
Now, if you will just slip off your coat so I can make measure. The suit is not for me. It is for my son. Ah, when will he come in for a fitting? It's to be a surprise. Ah, a present. You might call it that. I had written down all the measurements, made various diagrams of the style. Expensive. Then you'll have to charge me accordingly, shall we say, 200 pounds? 200? I will begin immediately. No. This schedule. It is of the greatest importance that you work on the suit only during the hours listed here. But these times, they're all past midnight. I happen to believe in astrology. The stars? I take it you are not a believer? Well, no matter. All that concerns you is following these instructions to the letter. There must be no mistake. Is that clear? No mistake. Everything will be as you wish, I swear. You'll find my address written on the top of the first sheet. When may I have delivery? Um, no, today is Monday. Uh, if I start tonight... Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I can bring you the suit on Friday. Excellent. I shall expect you the moment it is finished. Remember my instructions. Oh, I promise. Good night. Bruno? Who was that man? A customer. He ordered a suit. Two hundred pounds he will pay. Oh, no, I'm afraid. There is something not right in all this, something that will make you trouble. I must do it. Set to work to five o'clock only. I tried to work a little longer. Is finished. Four nights, nothing but work. From midnight till just before dawn. Uh, now he's done. May I see it? Hmm. It is strange. You are going to press it? No, no. 
Mrs. Smith doesn't want depressed. Then what will you do? Deliver it, just as he said, right now. Bring it. Ah, oh, God. Come in. Come in. This way. Careful now, the two steps down. Suit is completed. Oh, yes. It was difficult working with such material and at night only. But you followed the instructions. Just as you ordered. Splendid. You have no idea how much this means to me and to my son. Ah, y your son. Where is he? Never mind. Now, if I may see the suit. Ah, uh, Yes, of course, your fee. Just send me your account, and I'll take care of it. I must have the money first. I have bills to pay. You wouldn't understand you're rich. On the contrary. I understand the situation only too well. It so happens at the moment. I'm in the same financial position as yourself. And you? Don't misunderstand. In a very short while, I shall be in funds again. Just as soon as my son returns. Your diamond? Yes. It's a fake. I got real once, but I had to dispose of it in order to continue my work. My studies. This book now. It's very old, very rare. The only one of his kind left in the world. It cost me my fortune. You gave all your money for a book? Every penny. But I needed it because of my son. I sold everything to buy it. You are lying. See for yourself. There is nothing left. What is in that room? That room is empty, too. There is nothing in there, I tell you. Please! You're a murderer. No, I'm no murderer. He died a natural death. I knew a long time ago that it was inevitable. Can't you see? This is my son. Your son? 
is the one I was working for, planning for. The book told me what to do. That's why I had to make the suit. It is for him. Give it to me. No. Where's the money? No one can stop me now. Give me that suit. <laughs> You sold the suit? No. Mr. Stebbing's phone just after you left. He said to remind you he was coming for his rent in the morning. I told him it was all right you were collecting money from a customer tonight. You told him? Oh, Anna, I asked you not to say a word about this to anyone. Well, 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 it, put it in the stove oh. and burn it. Forget about the suit, forget I ever made the suit, forget about Mr. Smith, forget everything. Burn it. it. A fortune is heavy. I don't know what we will do now, but when people see how you look, perhaps they will come in. I told you to burn the suit. I put it on Otto. Otto? I made a name for him. I talk to him often when I am alone. Oh, please, burn the suit. I thought... No one must ever know it existed. Mr. Smith knows. Mr. Smith is dead. Dead? I killed him. It was an accident, but no one will believe that. What is that book? Mr. Smith had it. It is a book of magic. There is a spell for making the suit. The book, too, must be burned. No. What do you mean? Don't you see? If you have the book, you can show it to the police. Tell them what happened. Then they will believe you speak the truth. What do you know from the police? Bruno, please, for my sake, tell them what happened. No. Then I tell them. We cannot live with murder on our soul. Anna, no. No. Oh, no, Anna, no. Oh, no! Ah! 
Find him somewhere in the city. He is alive. I tell you, he is alive. How did it happen? You know, I can't tell you, not yet. Not until I've made my choice. Dr. Rutherford's orders. All right. Who's next? A strange case. A very strange case. Her name is Barbara. Oh, how good of you to come. You're the lawyer, aren't you? No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid not. I asked to see a lawyer. I told you to send for one. This is Dr. Martin. But I'm not ill. You can see that. Your lawyer would know that it wasn't my fault. I haven't accused you of anything. The doctors are alive. How can you be so sure about that? I happen to know a great deal about the medical profession. That's interesting. Did you study medicine yourself? <sighs> Ask too many questions. That's only because I want to help you. Then get me out of here. It wasn't my fault. You've got to understand that. I had nothing to do with it. It was... It was Lucy. Tell me about it. Right. Right. How do you feel, Barbara? You look marvellous. Oh, I feel fine. George, if only you knew how wonderful it is to be coming home again. Listen, I hope you're going to be very, very happy. Of course I will. Don't worry, it's not going to be like the last time. That's all over with now. I'm sure of it. Good. Nearly there now. I could swear I saw someone looking out of the window. Uh -huh. I thought for a moment it might be Lucy. Now, remember what you promised in hospital. You're not to mention her name again. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. But there is someone inside, isn't there? Yes. Who is it? You'll soon see. Well, who is it? Ah, Nurse Higgins. This is my sister, Barbara. Hello. I've heard so much about you. Nurse. Plain to be the nurse. Now, it's only temporary until you get settled in again. The doctor suggested... Here, I'll take that, sir. Shall we go upstairs, huh? Upstairs? You can pop right into bed. Bed? In the middle of the afternoon? Well, you've had quite a long trip. You must rest. But I'm not in the least bit tired. Now, Barbara, you promised me, remember? You ought to follow the doctor's instructions. This is my home. Our home. And I hope that we'll be together here always. You don't want to go back into hospital, do you? I sincerely hope it won't be necessary. Come along, dear. Aren't you going to come up? Later. I still think it's ridiculous going to bed at this hour. Doctor says you need a nap every day before tea to keep your strength. But I'll never sleep. Here, you're to drink this. 
What is it? Only a sedative, dear, to calm your nerves. I am calm. Perfectly calm. I just have one of my pills. Now, we're not to have any more of those things. That's better. Now, in we go. All comfy. Try to sleep now, and I'll look in on you a little later on. Tonight, after dinner, we'll have a nice chat. You'll be staying here in the evenings, too. Well, of course I will. And your brother's given me the room right next to yours. Hello? Oh, yes, would you hold on a minute, please? Uh, Nurse Higgins, it's for you. Thank you. Hello, yes? Yes, speaking. Oh, no. Where did you say? Charing Cross Hospital. No danger. She's 78. I... I'll come at once, as soon as I can. Nurse well, Higgins, is anything the matter? It's my mother. I... I'm afraid she's had an accident. I must go to her. Well, what about my sister? I put her to bed under sedation. She'll sleep for hours. Well, now, look, there's a train in 20 minutes. I'll run into the station. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll get my bag. <laughs> It wasn't easy. I've been waiting ever since you came home. Where? In the garage. That's where I phoned him from. Phoned? I had to get them out of the house. Knew he'd be gentleman enough to drive her to the station. Well, aren't you glad to see me? Well, of course I am. But what if he finds you here? I know. That's why we have to work quickly. I don't understand. Obviously. What's the matter? Nothing. I just feel a little faint. Have you been taking those pills again? No. No, that's all over with. He doesn't trust you, does he? Shutting you up like this in a darkened room. Bringing in a nurse. She's not your nurse, you know. She's your guard. Your keeper. But George wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, wouldn't he? Who owns this house? Why, I do. When Father died, he left everything to me. And if something happened to you? Suppose George has you put away for good. Oh, he wouldn't. Oh, he couldn't. All he has to do is to tell the doctors 
that you are too difficult to control at home. That nurse will back him up. But you know that's not true. And what good does that do? George won't listen to me. He doesn't even like it to see me. That's so, isn't it? Isn't it? to do. I've got to get you away from here. And we haven't got much time. But if I stay with you, you'll find me. Where could we go? I thought of that. We could take a room somewhere. Do you have any money? No, but you do. A hundred pounds. You put away for a new dress. How did you know that? You told me. Don't you remember? Well, I'll get it. No hurry. We can't go now. Not in broad daylight. Somebody's bound to notice. Besides, we'll need a car. Tonight, when George's asleep. Now, don't you worry. Just leave everything to me. Yes, Nancy. She wasn't. That's very strange. But you will be back tonight. Good. Now, there's a late train getting in at 10 o'clock. Take a taxi from the station and I'll reimburse you. Splendid. Well, I'll expect you then. Goodbye. <laughs> Some of the sedative they had for you. Put it in his tea. Oh, would he sleep? Oh, he didn't even feel it when I took his car keys. Oh, Miss Higgins. Oh, by the time she gets here, we'll be gone. Come on, now. There. Ah, you go and get dressed. Are you okay, huh? Yes. Yes, just a touch of nerves. I guess I'm not used to so much excitement. Oh, I love excitement. Here we are. 
Just the thing. What do you want with those? To cut the phone cord, silly. We don't want old Miss Higgins giving the alarm. Now, do we? You do think of everything. <laughs> I try to. Now, you hurry and get dressed. And I'll go down the hall and... Uh... Remember, I expect to find your dress when I get back. I say... Lord. It is a lot, isn't it? Just like old times. What are you doing? Give them to me. I can't. I need them. Give them to me. Please, Lucy. One more. I am not going to watch you ruin yourself. Just one more, Lucy, then I promise. I thought you said you weren't taking them. I can't help it. You mean you don't want to help it? You always had a choice. George or the pills. Me or the pills, and the pills always win. Was deep down inside. You hate George. You hate me. No, Lucy, you're my best friend. These are your friends. Your only friends. Oh, I'm good enough for you when you're in trouble. But I've never been good enough for George or anyone else you know. Now I, I can't even win out of a handful of these. No. What I have done for you today, you'll never know. And it isn't enough. I'm getting out. Now. No, Lucy. Do you want these? Here. Take them. Lucy. Lucy? Lucy? Lucy, come back! Miss Barbara, what are you doing out of I've got to go out. At this time of night? Yes, you don't understand, Miss Lucy. Lucy? Yes, you just left. I heard the car pull away. That was the cab I came in. There's no one out here. No one. Oh, oh then she's still here. Where's your brother? In the study, I suppose. George? George?
There, Barbara. Now you're free. Free of all of them. How do you understand why I must see a lawyer? They said I killed them. They say my fingerprints are on the shears. It's Lucy. Lucy, who did it? What does Lucy have to say about that? Why don't you ask her yourself? She's here with us now. Where? There she is. Don't you see her? Don't you see her? Don't you see her? <laughs> <laughs> Higgins murdered. There may have been. Now, Lucy. There may not have even been a Barbara. Meaning she might be Dr. Stahl? No, I don't think so. I don't think I've met Dr. Stahl yet. Maybe there is no such person. Perhaps your Dr. Rutherford is just playing a game. Dr. Rutherford never plays games. How many more are there for me to see? Just one. And then the choice. Then the choice. Tell me about this one. He calls himself Byron. Dr. Byron. Byron? Gentlemen. I brought Dr. Martin to see you. It's always a pleasure to meet a colleague. You're a doctor. Indeed I am, sir. Physician, neurosurgeon and orthopedic specialist. And uh, lately I found uh, still another vocation, even more fascinating. Would you care to see some of my recent work? Yes, I'd be happy to. If you'd be good enough to step over here. Hmm. Who are the subjects? Former colleagues of mine. Of course, I had to model their faces from memory. Quite a hobby. Oh, it's more than a hobby. Much more. These are not ordinary figures. The eyes were made to see. Inside each skull is a perfectly proportioned brain, perfectly capable of functioning. You talk about them as though they were alive. Hmm. That's the final step. From playthings to creations. Living creations. I know it sounds a bit... Uh, <laughs> but you see, the Bible tells us that the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Thus the man became a living creature. Do you believe that, Doctor? I'm afraid I put my belief in science. And so do I. If I could breathe my uh, consciousness into one of these figures, that figure will come alive. <laughs> you want to see what I'm working on now? Call it my, my final creation. That's your face? Mm -hmm. My face and inside my body, correct to the smallest detail. I can turn it on and you'll say, oh yes, it operates on batteries. But how do you know what it is inside? What is it? It's me. I mean, not yet, but... It will be. Through the power of concentration, I shall... I shall will my mind to enter its body, and it'll be me. Rutherford wouldn't believe I could do it. He locked me up, but he let me keep my... My dolls. Occupational therapy, he called it. You'll soon find out what they are. That's right, go. Run away and hide from the truth like that idiot downstairs. 
But it won't do any good, you know. You can tell Rutherford for me. Tell him the truth. We'll find him out. Tell him! Well, which is it? Would you mind stepping into your office and telling the doctor that I'm ready to come down? No need. I'll use the intercom. What do you want me to tell him? Just tell him I'm coming to see him. Dr. Martin is ready to come down, sir. Thank you for your help. Don't mention it. It was a pleasure. Um, doctor. Good luck. So, you've seen the patients. Well, what do you think? I think it's a disgrace. This institution, the way it's run, everything about it. Those patients, locked away by themselves, lost in their own fantasies and no attempt made to bring them back to reality. You forget they're incurable. Take a man like Byron. You think you could rid him of his delusions? I'd be willing to try. Then you'd fail. Byron is hopelessly insane. hallucinations. This is prefrontal lobotomy. Exactly. Do you believe that surgery is a substitute for psychiatry? It's effective. Yes, it's effective in turning intelligent human beings into vegetables.
Your choice. You'd still give me the job in spite of our differences? If you choose correctly. You might do some good here. Your choice. Your tea, Doctor. Thank you, Nurse. Milk and sugar? Nothing. I'm going back to London. You won't choose? No. I'm disappointed in you, Martin. Why? Because I refuse to play games with you? Because you admit defeat. Defeat? You can't identify Dr. Starr. That's why you're leaving, isn't it? Because you failed the test. Test? I'm not a schoolboy. I'm a qualified doctor. Obviously not qualified to practice here. These patients are badly in need of proper therapy. You won't help them. You won't even let them help themselves. On the contrary. I give them every opportunity to work out their fantasies. That's wrong, then. Jake Byron, for example. His work is remarkable. Also dangerous. Dangerous? To himself. Perhaps this time I put an end to it. Destroyed his figures. That may make him even worse. Or cure him. Yes, I think the time has come to take Byron's toys away from him. <laughs> Body was crushed. So let's see how Luke Byron star. You recognized him then, sir? It was obvious. Where are you going? To call the police. Is there a phone in your office? Don't go in there, sir. No. He's been strangled. Two days ago. There was no opportunity to dispose of it. Dispose of it? Who is he? His name was Max. Reynolds. Really? Yes. I'm afraid your guess was wrong. I am Dr. Starr. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've come about the appointment. Yes, I was expecting you. Do come in. Thank you. Better keep the door closed and keep out the drafts, as Dr. Starr used to say. 